and presenting a case report on radiological manifestations of von Hippel Lindau syndrome. Clinical history A 41 year old male without a significant past medical history presented to our hospital complaining of 15 days history of vomiting and abdominal pain. Physical examination was unremarkable. Routine lab investigations were within normal limits, including blood counts, renal, and liver function tests. Imaging findings ultrasound of abdomen and pelvis demonstrated bilateral multiple simple renal cysts, multiple simple liver cysts, and bilateral large adrenal masses. So, in the first image, here we can see a well defined smooth wall, few cysts noted in both lobes of liver, suggest of simple liver cyst. In the second image, there is a well defined smooth wall, few cysts are noted in both the kidneys, suggest of simple renal cyst. In the third image, there is a well defined heterogeneous soft tissue lesion, predominantly hypoechoic. Noted between the spleen and left kidney. Left kidney is not shown here. It is most likely suggestive of adrenal mass. In the fourth image, there is a well defined heterogeneous, predominantly hypoechoic soft tissue lesion noted between the liver and right kidney, most likely suggestive of adrenal mass. Subsequently, a contrast enhanced CT abdomen demonstrated multiple. Thin wall cyst lesions of varying sizes noted in both kidneys consistent with bilateral simple renal cyst. Second, multiple thin wall cyst lesions of varying sizes noted in both lobes of liver consistent with simple liver cyst. And third, heterogeneously enhancing bilateral adrenal masses most likely suggest of bilateral pheochromocytomas. So here we can see there is a multiple well-defined smooth wall cystic lesions are noted in both lobes of fever. In the second image, uh, there is a bilateral adrenal masses seen. On the right side, adrenal mass is somewhat heterogeneous and uh, there is a hypodensity seen within the lesion suggestive of necrosis. Again, uh, we can see there is a bilateral renal cystic lesions and a liver simple cyst and also there is a bilateral adrenal masses. A contrast enhanced MRI of brain was done demonstrating a cystic lesion in the inferior aspect of left cerebellar hemisphere with an enhancing solid component. This lesion is likely represent hemangioblastoma. Discussion, von Hippel lindau syndrome is an autosomal dominant inherited neoplastic disorder that demonstrates age-dependent penetrance and marked phenotypic variability. The basic underlying abnormality is mutation in VHL tumor suppression gene located on the short arm of chromosome number 3. The tumors are initiated by VHL inactivation and are associated with abnormal activation of hypoxic gene response pathway. The most frequent tumors are retinal and CNS hemangioblastoma, followed by a clear cell RCC, pheochromocytoma, pancreatic ILX tumors, and endolymphatic sac tumors. In addition, renal and pancreatic cysts, as well as epididymal or broad ligament cyst adenomas, also occur. All of the tumors that are typically found in VHL disease can occur as a sporadic event. So, a clinical diagnosis of VHL disease is a, in a patient with a positive family history requires the presence of two tumors. Example, two hemangioblastomas or a hemangioblastoma and a visceral tumor. Although specific gene mutations can be demonstrated, diagnosis is generally clinical and depends primarily on the imaging. Location-wise, patient may develop some or all of the various lesions, which includes abdominal pelvis lesion, where renal is most common, which includes renal cell carcinoma, renal cyst, and renal angiomyolipoma, from which renal cell carcinoma are most common. The second is adrenal, adrenal sphere pheochromocytoma or extra adrenal pheochromocytoma can be seen, where pheochromocytoma is 25 to 30% common. In pancreas may be represented earlier and pancreatic cysts are most common. Prenate can be seen usually non-functional and frequently multiple can be seen in 9 to 17 percent of patients. Pancreatic serous cyst adenoma or pancreatic adenocarcinoma can be seen. In liver, liver cysts are more common. 
urogenitally uh, there is epididymal cyst can be present broad ligament cystadenomas can be present in cns 70% of patient may uh, presented with a cns mangioblastomas where uh, the most common site is cerebellar or second most common is spinal cord or can be seen in brainstem we have presented here classical case of rare DHL syndrome. CACT abdomen when consistent with bilateral pheochromocytomas, liver and renal cyst. MRI findings were consistent with hemangioblastoma of left cerebellar hemisphere. Imaging findings confirm the diagnosis of, uh, diagnosis of DHL syndrome. Therefore, serum and urinary catecholamines levels were done for screening of pheochromocytomas and were found to be raised. The patient is now being worked up for resection of pheochromocytomas and hemangioblastomas and further follow planning was made. Treatment. Primary treatment of all VHL related tumors is local, for example, surgical resection, RFA, or radiotherapy. Systemic treatment is recommended in the metastatic set settings, addressing the same therapeutic principles as in the sporadic malignancies. Due to the rarity of VHL, data about uh, systemic treatments are sparse. PGF targeting agent seems to be reasonable choice with regards to the pathophysiology in most of the tumors. High levels of EEGF are found in hemangioblastoma and it has been hypothesized that blocking the EEGF pathway might result in disruption of the tumor angiogenesis and cons consequently tumor regression. Conclusion, early diagnosis and application of recommended screening program for VHL is of utmost important to prevent early morbidity and mortality. Local therapeutic approaches are the means of tumor treatment and should be provided by experienced physician with a widespread knowledge of VHL disease. Further understanding of pathophysiology and consequences of VHL gene mutations may guide further targeted therapies. Even if asymptomatic, such patients should be followed to detect new lesions and to monitor the progression of known lesions. Follow-up evaluation focuses on hemangioblastomas and endolymphatic sac tumors, pheochromocytomas, clear cell RCC, and pancreatic cyst adenomas, as well as lesions of epididymis and broad ligament of uterus, and can be tailored to individual patient need. Thank you.